Did you think that Ramos injured you intentionally in the final champion? And that time was mentally like it was very very bad, especially when I get substitution and I went to the dressing room was just crying because I felt like Champions League is over and the World Cup is over. What's good guys, it's your boy Gialex here. Over the past few days I did some digging around and I found a few interesting things. So what I want to do today is present to you what I found and then you guys can make your own assumptions on this situation. Anyways, let's not waste any more time and let us get straight to it. After the 2017 Champions League final between Real Madrid and Juventus, Marcelo came out and said a few interesting things. He spoke about how nervous the Real Madrid players were, including Cristiano himself, before the final. Then he proceeded to say that Cristiano predicted that it's going to be a hard first half, but then they'll win it very easily in the second. A plan which we all know by now was well executed by Real Madrid, as they clearly had too much going on for Juve in the end. And when Real Madrid was 3-1 up and Juve was trying one last attempt to get back into this game, Real Madrid really made sure that Juve has no chance of coming back, and this moment happened. And I want you guys to remember this and see if it relates to what I'm about to say next. Just don't go anywhere near him, just stands on his foot there. But, but, well, I mean, yeah, the, rea the reaction's mean, ridiculous, isn't I it? I mean, but do me a favour. Three pirouettes, I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Now, Ramos will be, he'll be embarrassed after. When yeah. Ramos sees that... So, 2018. Before the Champions League final between Real Madrid and Liverpool, the media, TV experts, ex-players, etc. They made sure to really put the pressure on Real Madrid as they were about to make history and become the first ever team in history to win three Champions League trophies in a row. Now, the media and the football world wanted to see a different winner that night and they believed that Mo Salah was the key to that happen. So much so that... This triggered reactions from everyone at Real Madrid. People want to compare uh, me with uh, another players. I'm, I'm different than anyone. Salah is different than the other ones. He play with the left, I play with the right. I'm tall, he's a little bit shorter. I play with the head, it, you know. We are completely different. However, it was one thing in particular that really got into Marcelo's head. A few days before the final, an next Real Madrid player said on TV that Marcelo should buy a poster of Mo Salah and put it up on his wall and pray to it every single night. I tend to believe that this statement got to more players than just Marcelo because even without Mo Salah doing this himself and the media doing this, he was inside the Real Madrid player's heads. And you can see it. Marcelo then carried on to speak about how before this final in specific, he's never experienced anxiety like this before in his life. He was sick, he couldn't breathe and, and basically he was feeling the pressure. But based on everyone else's reactions from the Real Madrid camp, he wasn't the only one feeling that way. And this is significant guys because these Real Madrid players, they are serial winners. And honestly guys, this might be a reach of what I'm about to say, but I can see why Mo Salah in specific got into their heads so much because it's not often that they do play against the left foot goal machine, but when Real Madrid does play against a left foot genius like that, well, this little man in specific has left them scarred. So, from first hand experience, I think Real Madrid knew that it might take more than just tactics to stop a player like Mo Salah. And well, before and even during the game, you can just tell that the Real Madrid players were nervous. And as Salah and Liverpool were really showing that they have a chance and not letting history happen that night, well, whether by chance or intention, this happened. And of course, things like this happen in sport, right? But what I found even more interesting is Ramos' approach to this because I could just see a lack of remorse or even just lack of emotion towards this topic. Now, when you don't mean to do something bad to another player or another person in general, you do have that sense of guilt and you are apologetic because, I mean, you just didn't mean it. So I'm sorry, right? It's not the case of Ramos. So maybe I just have a different perspective on this. Because even months later, Ramos continued to take shots at Liverpool about this situation in particular and even had to say this. Are you worried about the reception you might receive from English fans tomorrow night and does that thing, both, does that sort of reception, does that concern you as a player at all? No, no, para nada. Eh, yo todas mis acciones dentro de un campo nunca han sido con, con intención de hacer 
daño a ningún compañero de profesión, por eso tengo mi conciencia muy tranquilo y duermo todos los días muy. Like I said, these moments happen, but I found it interesting in analyzing how Ramos responded to this situation. But yeah, football is a contact sport, and injuries, heated moments, they're going to happen, guys. But having said that, it's interesting to me that most of these incidents, especially when it comes to the top clubs in recent years, have had something to do with this guy, one way or another. It's always Ramos popping up. So, G Nation, my fellow investigators, what do you guys think about this situation? Was it a chance or was it intention? As always, this was your boy G Alex. I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out.